The uh, Committee on Education and Labor will come to order, a quorum being present. Today the committee meets to consider legislation pursuant to the instructions of the House Concurrent Resolution 99. Under the budget resolution, our committee was, at, was tasked with finding savings of the mandatory spending programs within this committee's jurisdiction, and that is the purpose of this, uh, of this markup. For years, college costs have, have risen rapidly, far outstripping families' ability to pay them. Students are graduating with more debt than ever before and along with their families are working harder and harder to pay back their college loans. In many cases, the high price of attending college is keeping many qualified students from attending at all. This growing cost crisis harms not, not just students and families but also our nation's economic future. This committee is committed to growing and strengthening America's middle class and making college more affordable and accessible for all qualified students and it's a key part of that overall goal. That's why I'm very proud that we are here today to consider legislation that does more to help Americans pay for college than any effort since the GI Bill, at no, at no new cost to the taxpayers. The College Cost Reduction Act of 2007, H.R. 2669, and the amendments in the nature of a substitute that I will offer today will boost college financial aid by nearly $20 billion over the next five years. And the bill does so in a fiscally responsible way. We are committed to pay-as-you-go budget rules, and we honor that commitment in this legislation. All of the increases in college financial aid are fully offset by reducing excessive federal sub subsidies paid to lenders in the college loan industry. In fact, the bill also includes $750 million in budget deficit reduction. This bill shows that with smart policy, we can be fiscally responsible and we can be responsive to the concerns of the American people and their families. H.R. 2669 provides a $500 increase in the Pell Grant Scholarship using mandatory funds phased in over five years and on top of the appropriated amount with the current appropriated amount at $4,700, which was announced last week, the Pell Scholarship would be set to rise to $5,200 in 2013. This legislation also includes the bipartisan H.R. 990, the Pell Grant Equity Act, a bill ranking member McKeon and I passed through the House earlier this year to eliminate tuition sensitivity provisions that unfairly penalize students attending low-cost tuition institutions. We are also establishing a year-round Pell program, which along with changes made in the income protection, uh, protection allowance, reflects provisions outlined in H.R. 2017, the Part-Time Student Assistance Act introduced by Mr. Rush Holt. In addition to the changes of income protection allowance, we also amend the needs analysis and formula to increase the auto zero, if you will, uh, for, for Pell's from a current $20,000 level to $30,000. The legislation also includes provisions of H.R. 5, the, student, the College Student Relief Act, to cut interest rates in half for undergraduate students with subsidized student loans, those with the most financial need over the next five years. This provision alone will save students with $13,800 in need-based loan, approximately $4,400 over the life of the loan. In addition to cutting interest rates in half, the College Cost Reduction Act will also increase the borrowing limits for third and fourth year students to $7,500, increasing the aggregate borrowing limits to $30,500. The loan limits are done in tandem with efforts to make debt more manageable for students, which we believe is the most responsible way for helping, helping students. Included in this legislation is an income-based repayment proposal that builds on the tenets of the Income Contingent Repayment Program by guaranteeing that borrowers will not have to spend more than 15 percent of their discretionary income on federal student loan repayments. Additionally, this bill includes language from the bill introduced by Representative Sarbanes to provide a complete loan forgiveness for public sector employees after 10 years of service. In keeping with alleviating the student loan debt, the College Cost Reduction Act includes $5,000 in loan forgiveness for those serving the country in critical areas including first responders, law enforcement officers, firefighters, nurses, public defenders, prosecutors, early childhood educators, librarians, and public sector employees. Much of this follows legislation introduced by several members on the, on the subcommittee on loan forgiveness, including Ms. Ms. Hirono, who has introduced a bill, a bill for early childhood educators, as well as Mr. Sistek, who included the idea of supporting early child educators in the Head Start bill, and, and Ms. McCarthy for nurses and nurse faculty. 
With college tuition skyrocketing, the bill includes several provisions to address college costs. Specifically, the legislation includes a provision to ensure the, the states maintain their own level of college finance, financing. States would not be allowed to cut funding for higher education while, while family and federal support continues. As, as, as offered in Mr. Tierney's College Affordability and Accountability Act from last Congress, this legislation offers incentives to, to allow for additional mandatory Pell Grants for schools that keep their annual net tuition increases at a rate equal to or below the increase in the higher education price index for the academic year. The bill also includes provisions from Ranking Member McKeon's College Affordability and Transparency Act of 2000 and including the redesign of the existing U.S. Department of College Opportunities on, online locator website, making it easier for parents and students while not, aiding burdens, uh, while not adding burdensome, burdensome reporting requirements for colleges and universities. Additionally, the bill creates a cooperative education rewards for institutions or consortium institutions that provide students with both academic and work experiences in order to, to prepare them for their future careers and help students support themselves financially while in school. H.R. 2669 also makes a historic investment to ensure that we place a highly qualified teacher in every classroom through the creation of the TEACH grants that would provide upfront prepaid tuition assistance of $4,000 a year, a maximum of $16,000 for high achieving graduate and undergraduate students who commit to teaching in high need subjects in high need schools for four years. The bill includes $500 million, a landmark new investment in historical black colleges and universities, Hispanic serving institutions, <coughs> and predominantly black uh, institutions. The bill also establishes centers of excellence to provide funds for minority serving institutions. This will help them recruit and prepare teachers and increase opportunities for Americans at all educational, ethnic class, and geographical backgrounds to become highly qualified teachers. Finally, this legislation establishes the College Access Challenge Grants to leverage federal funds to increase the number of students from underserved populations who enter and compete and, and, and complete college through matching grants with philanthropic organizations. The federal government will provide a two-to-one match for private and, 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 other, and other public funds for these, for these purposes. The bill is fully paid with, with cuts from lender subsidies. It builds on the proposals we introduced in H.R. 5 and on proposals outlined by the President in his 2008 budget. Specifically, the bill includes the following offsets. Decreasing the, the lender's special allowance rate by 55 percentage points. Lowering the lender, the lender insurance rates from to 95 percent and eliminating the exceptional performer status so that all lenders are paid the same insurance rate. Increasing lender origination fees of 1 percent for for-profit lenders while eliminating the fee for smaller and non-profit lenders. Lowering the, the guarantee agency collection fees to 16 percent and, and changing uh, guarantee agency account maintenance fees to the per unit basis. This bill represents a remarkable and indeed a historic step, step forward in our efforts to help every qualified student go to college. No one should be denied the opportunity to go to college simply because of the price. It is a time to put the American dream and all of the opportunities that it promises back within the reach of every family in our country. I thank you and at this time I'd like to recognize Mr. McKeon.